We're still in Titus chapter 1 um, and tonight we're going to um, get to the end of chapter 1. So we're going to look at um, Titus chapter 1 and verses 15 and 16 tonight, which I shall, um, I shall read out to you. So, um, yes, uh, Titus 1, Titus 1, Titus 1 and verses 15 and 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, and unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every sorry and unto every good work reprobate so the the context here what paul's talking about is uh, really the difference between the the judaizers we might call them and uh, so those who are trying to trying to bring people back under the law trying to bring Christians back under the law and um, and those who um, have salvation in Christ. But so, so there's like there's two groups of people. There's those who ge are genuine believers who have come to faith uh, in Christ and, and know that salvation is by grace through faith. And then there's this other group that have kind of, if you like, crept in. They're these group of teachers, uh, false teachers, as we, we've been looking at, and they say, no, it's it's about um, coming back under the law. And, and essentially, that they are teaching that salvation is by the law. And there's an important distinction to make here, because sometimes when you start saying, uh, well, there are these group of people, these Judaizers, and they thought that salvation was through the law, people say, oh, yeah, um, they taught a work salvation. And and it is it is a work salvation. But when we say work salvation in the context of the New Testament, really what it is is salvation through observing the Mosaic law. It's and people get this wrong, you know. Um, so nowhere will you see that it's saying here, oh, well they're telling everybody to just do good works and that's enough. They're not saying that, and it will become really apparent when we get to verse sixteen here tonight. That, that that can't possibly be what they're saying. What they're teaching people is um, that it's about it's n that it's not actually about good works, but it's about circumcision. That it's about uh, keeping the feasts. That it's about all that kind of ceremonial law that came through Moses. They're saying, oh no, you have to do all this. Um, so just kind of backtrack a little bit to um, verse. 10 and it gives us sort of a little glimpse we looked at it uh, but it gives us a little glimpse um as to these to these uh false these false teachers um it says that they were un many are unruly and vain talkers and deceivers especially they of the circumcision so um they're unruly in other words they're rebellious so there's a, there's a group of people these teachers or these kind of self-proclaimed teachers who are insubordinate um they 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 are sort of unfortunately being given something of a platform to teach uh, whether that's officially or not officially but they have no regard for the authority of the church in fact they despise it and also we we looked at um in verse uh, what was it? Verse fourteen. Uh, it says, "Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men." So, so they're big on uh, Jewish fables, commandments of men. So, you know that that like this was one of the criticisms that Jesus had, wasn't it? When he came to the to the Pharisees, he said, "You know, you 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 teach as uh, doctrines the commandments of men. You know, you take these commandments from the elders and from the leaders of your people." And you treat them as if they were like scripture, you know. So even at times laying aside uh, the teachings of Moses, you kind of bring this other teaching in and say, well, you know, this is really, you know, this is more important 
than the, than the scriptures. So this is what's going on here. They are not saying salvation is by doing good works. What they're saying, and it isn't by the way, it's by grace through faith. But what they're saying is they're trying to get people to go back under the law. So kind of, you know, the sacrifices, the circumcision, the observing certain feasts and festivals and so on. That They're trying to say, look, this is essential for salvation. That this is how you have peace with God. Like this is, if you like, the way to heaven is by observing all these different things. And we see um, a similar problem uh, back in Isaiah chapter 1. Let's have a look at it. So, um, gosh, Isaiah is so powerful, particularly the first part of it here. So Isaiah 1, um, verse 11 uh, so this is God. God is angry with Israel, the, the, the hypocrisy, you know, of, of how they're living. And so verse 11, he says, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings and, uh, sorry, of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to to bear them uh, and some people have kind of concluded from that oh so god hates uh these festivals and god hates um uh, sabbaths and god hates uh offerings and incense and they've kind of like missed the point because all those things god ordained in the old testament you know god said i want you to do this i want you to keep these sabbaths i want you to do uh these offerings i want you to bring these offerings to me because they were all pictures of christ weren't they Remember, it's like the ABC, uh, you know, the, the law is the schoolmaster that brings us to Christ. So it's like all these things are pictures of Christ and therefore that's that's why they're important. But what God is saying, it shows in verse 15 of Isaiah 1. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Why? Because your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. So the whole point of it is not, uh, oh, God hates incense. We better not have any incense in a church. That's, you know, not the point at all. His point, it, God's point is, why are you bringing all these things that I've commanded, yet your hands shed innocent blood? You know, you're living in an evil way. You know, cease to do evil, learn to do good, learn to do that which is right. Uh, and so it's a matter of the heart is what he's saying. You know, it's like you can't you can't cure your heart by doing all these um, ceremonial things, you know, because because they don't touch your heart, do they? These are outward physical things, uh, but they're not actually touching your inward uh, spirit and again Jesus talks doesn't he about uh, the Pharisees that they clean the outside of the cup and so on but inside uh, it, it's it's all unclean it's all it's all corrupt so so that is a context of what we're looking at um, tonight is this different I wanted to, you to see that it's not here in this section grace versus works here it's it's about real Christians, genuine Christians, and then false teachers coming in, teaching Christians and saying, well, you need to come uh, under these rules of, um, you know, you need to be more Jewish. And, uh, oh my goodness, the, <laughs> there are some churches that actually do teach that, really. Yeah, yeah, you need to be more Jewish, you need to be more, you know, you need to have your services in Hebrew, you need to say Yeshua, not Jesus. And it's like, look, you're missing the point. You know, it's about what, what's about your heart and it's about, you know, the things that you do, the, the moral actions that you take. You know, these the people in Isaiah, you know, were killing people. 
and yet still coming and taking part in the service. You know, so it's like but what Wesley calls both inward and outward holiness. That's what it's about. Uh, so we, we read or I read um, this idea of pure, was it unto the pure, all things are pure, unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. So what does that mean? Well, um, the distinction uh, has been made uh, between real Christianity and this kind of mosaic, uh, the mosaic law, uh, the law, the ceremonial law, right? So um, Paul says, um, sorry, rather Peter says that, that God put no difference between us, that is Jews, and them, that is Gentiles, purifying their hearts by faith. Acts 15 verse 9. So Peter is saying, you know, look, we came, we realise that God has put no difference between Jews and Gentiles, that when they believe on Christ, um, that their hearts are purified by faith. So who are those who are the pure that he's talking about? Well, those whose hearts have been purified uh, by by faith uh, and, and, and also uh, sanctified, of course, by by the holy spirit uh, and so and so to those who have been purified whether jew or gentile uh, but they're cr genuine christians christians understand have this understanding or they should understand that the the mosaic dis distinction between clean and unclean meats is no longer applicable yeah do you understand that it's like you know in under the mosaic law you weren't allowed to eat pork, you weren't allowed to eat, um, what was it, hare, like rabbits, and you know, there was all certain shellfish, there were kind of these rules, dietary rules, but when you come to Christ, like those rules don't apply anymore. You know, God's not going to be angry because you're eating a prawn. It's like that's not what it's about. Um, so let's have a look at a, a verse that shows that. So 1 Timothy um, 4. Verse 24, and again, and by the way, we noticed how much time Paul spends talking and warning against false teachers, yeah, and warning against false doctrine, and warning against false practices. It's amazing, isn't it, how much time he takes up. It's not all positive, and God loves you, and he's got a wonderful plan for your life. It's actually, watch out for these guys. Watch out for what they're teaching. Okay, so uh, 1 Timothy 4. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer so it's like no there's not this kind of like oh, you can't eat this meat because it's kind of you know uh, it's not kosher that that's not our understanding and and once our hearts are purified by faith we understand that you know, we could see that. So, so it's no longer unclean to us. It's pure. Yeah, because God, God, God has declared it clean. So, to the pure, all things are pure, because you know we we, we understand that. Uh, and again, sort of uh, Romans uh, fourteen. So Romans 14 and verse 14 says, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So this is about, you know, how you perceive, if you perceive a certain meat to be unclean, then firstly, your first problem is you haven't read the Bible properly. 
uh, and, and, and secondly, it will be unclean to you because your conscience would condemn you if you ate it. So you would think that you were actually committing a sin. So then to willfully do it, you would bring condemnation on yourself. Because even though you know, you know you're wrong, it's not actually unclean. If you believe that it is unclean, uh, then it is, it is sin to you. So in that sense, it's, or what do you call it, uh, uh, a subjective thing. So it is important that, that, you know, you don't do things that are against your conscience. And that was what it talked about, didn't it? Uh, about these people whose, uh, verse 15 of Titus 1, these people whose mind and conscience is defiled. So again, the conscience is, is, is really important here. Um, so, so there is... There are those who, who are pure because they've been purified by faith and by and by the action of the Holy Spirit sanctifying us. And to us, these meats are pure. They're clean. There's nothing, you know, I, I, I can go to the local Indian takeaway and, you know, uh, or uh, any kind of halal place. And it's not like, oh, my goodness, I can't eat that because, you know, God will God will judge me for it. No, because it's all declared clean. These are just meats. Yeah. Um, but to those who have not been born again, to those who don't have the Spirit of God, there is a pollution, an uncleanness, a defilement that has taken place with their conscience, right? And also their power of um, their powers of understanding. So that you know, because of sin, those both those things, their conscience and their understanding means that they can't have a spiritual understanding to them their religion or, or serving god is all about what you eat or what you don't eat it's all about you know um i don't know um it's about it's about saying special prayers or you know wearing funny clothes you know this is what religion is to them um it's like well i don't eat this or i'm you know i'm a vegan or i'm all you know it's like that is the heart of what religion means means to them it's like physical stuff but there's a great scripture romans 14 verse 17 that says the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost that's re real religion you know and I, I use the word religion you know i don't mean religion in inverted commas because the bible talks about uh, uh, true religion or pure religion James says you know so so yeah our religion is about a relationship with God and it's about uh, righteousness uh, that is right standing with God right thinking right acting it's also about peace with God and peace uh, with our brothers and sisters and and it's about joy in the Holy Ghost so so that's what our religion is it's not outward things. It's not like, you know, wearing a kind of funny hat or or of avoiding certain meats because you consider them to be unclean. And so that's what Paul is saying, really. The, the beginning there, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. They can't understand it. They can't, um, they can't get their head around it. Uh, because the scripture says the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned 1 Corinthians 2 14 so the people that Paul is warning Titus about these people are, are, are not saying well we're not Christians we don't we don't believe in God, you know, we, they believe in God. They profess to know God. Uh, they profess to be believers. So, well, what do you do? You know, if you if they come into your church, how, how can you tell whether they are false believers, whether they're false teachers who are going to do you harm or, or how, you know, can you even tell? Uh, and I think, it shows that you can tell by verse 16. What did it say? Um, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. 
in works they die. And that's what I was saying. It's not th this passage is not about oh well some people believe salvation by grace, others believe it's by works. Because now he's talking about the works that they do, um, so it can't mean that. Um, but he's talking about how the way in which they live, how they act, uh, and how that contradicts what they say. So in other words, they profess to know God, but in their works and things that they do, they deny that to be the case. You know, it, 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 they contradict what they've said because of the way that they live. Remember um, uh, a friend that I had who was, um, who who had started going to church with me and then he kind of fallen away, you know, uh, and fallen away quite badly. And I met him really kind of randomly. I was just walking, I was on my way home from work and I was walking through the bus station and he appeared in the bus station. I hadn't seen him for years, but he was absolutely, uh, what would you say, drunk, I say. He was drunk and he was staggering around. And I sort of said, oh, hi. Uh, and, and we started this conversation together. And the, 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 the conversation was, you know, wasn't didn't go very well and was kind of cut short. And as I was trying to walk off, he said to me, Look, I know I'm not living right, but I always tell people that's the best way to live is to walk and follow Jesus and follow God's commandments. That's the best way. So he said, I, I don't live it, but I always tell other people that's what you should do. And I said, I think that might be called hypocrisy. <laughs> you know, there's no God's not going to say, well, you know, you lived a terrible life. He did all these wicked things, but at least he always told people they need to be a Christian. Because God's not going to commend you for that, you know, for being a hypocrite. And so this is what these people are. They they profess to know God, but in the way that they live and how they act, they contradict. So let's have a look at um, 1 John uh, chapter 3. First John 3, 7. By the way, the whole of First John uh, will, will, you know, expands really from this verse. You can't really read First John and think that, oh, OK, I can just kind of do my own thing as a Christian. I can live how I want. So, um, uh, yeah, First John 3, 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. So, so. Living righteously is required by God. That it's not just all about, you know, well, I'm righteous, I've got right standing with God. Well, are you living righteously? Are you doing, do you, what did it say? Do you doeth righteousness? Are you doing righteousness? Because if you're not, you're not righteous. You know, that's the evidence of it, that, that the Holy Spirit is living within you. Is it, it has to be it has to be borne out and as I say just carry on reading because you know it it says it all the way through here you know it's about it's about walking in obedience of course by grace through faith but nevertheless doing it and um, it, it goes on to say that that not only um, do they deny him in their works but uh, it says being abominable and this is a really strong word you know in the original greek uh the word means detestable it's an incredibly strong word it, it just completely destroys this notion that that you know grace somehow excuses believers living in sin that oh well we've got grace we're okay again you, you'll know after our studies through the book of uh through the epistle to the romans that this is what it says in romans 6 which i'll just read to you um Verse 1, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin, so a believer is dead to sin, live any longer therein? And, you know, we could have looked at, um, well, the various points going down. I don't know, like verse 6 uh, of Romans 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin and then verse 7 for he that is dead is freed from sin and 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 so on and just read the whole lot through there again romans 6 will tell you and teach you that no you don't you don't carry on 
committing sin when you're a Christian. The idea is, and it's not saying that it's it just all goes away, but you're supposed to overcome temptation by the grace of God. I mean, that's why the hope we have the Holy Spirit is so that when we are tempted, we're able to overcome that and able to fight against that temptation and to understand God has given us this power within us so that we can be overcomers, victorious, more than conquerors and so on. Not so that you can be conquered every single day by sin. So, so what we're looking for then when, when we look at other believers is a consistency in speech and life. Yeah, so that they say, I am a Christian, praise God, I love him, uh, and all things that Christians say and pray. We want to see, okay, if that's what they say, is that how they're living? Um, you know, and we're not just saying, make sure a person doesn't do this and doesn't do that. It, it, it also involves, you know, what might be neglected. So, you know, so I would say, you know, does the person have anything that resembles a prayer life? You know, do you, do you only see them at church or what about away from church? You know, maybe they stand up and pray in, in the main meeting and pray for a long time. Yeah, that's in front of other people. What about when they come away from that? Do they have a prayer life? You know, have they, do you ever see them studying the Bibles? You know, do, they, do you ever take the Bible out and you're like, oh, look, he's, he or she's reading Bible? You know, it's not a church meeting. It's not, you know, it's not like whoever has got to have the Bible. But do they just do that by themselves? They just take the Bible out and read it and study it because they love it. Um, you know, are they are they disobedient to the word? You know, do they, when, when the word is taught and preached, they're like, amen. And this kind of stuff but then you know for a fact that they're not actually obeying that you know they're, they're actually disobeying god's um god's word uh do they do they share the gospel with others and again i don't mean do they hang around with unbelievers that's not the same thing it's okay to hang around with unbelievers if whilst you're there what you're actually doing is sharing the gospel with them that that's that's your purpose for being with them it's because you want to tell them about jesus you know do they actually talk to others about Jesus do they even talk about God sin righteousness heaven hell you know is this part of their conversation and it's quite interesting when and not the moment because we're, we're under difficult circumstances at the moment but normally when a church meeting ends and you get to talk to people after the church that's kind of when you get the answer to those sort of questions isn't it you know, because people tend to talk about what they're interested in, don't they? You know, if you're really, really interested in, I don't know, Formula One racing or Manchester United or, or you know, baking or so, I don't know, whatever the subject is, and that's your passion and that's your life, it doesn't take too long before the person's like, so what team do you support then? You know, it's like, because whatever you're interested in, when you get a chance to talk to somebody, you want to talk about that. So is the person that you're meeting and talking to, are they talking about God? Are they talking about the Bible? Are they talking about how they help others? Are they, are they inquiring about your soul and your spiritual walk? How are you doing? How is your spiritual life? You know, these are, this reveals so much I found over the years, you know, as, as a, if you like, as a pastor, it's like what people talk about is really where they're at with God, to be honest. You know, it reveals an awful lot uh, and then, you know, if they do talk about those things, is their life consistent with what they're talking about? Do they practice um, uh, what they preach? Um, so uh, the, so what I'm saying is that, that these people, these false teachers uh, who are coming in, trying to Judaize Christians, trying to get them to obey um, the, the ceremonial laws and so on, that such people are reprobate. That's a really strong word. Reprobate means cast off from God. God has, has, has done with them. And so what you have is this deadly combination. Do you remember last week we talked about the Cretans, the inhabitants of Crete, and how they were kind of notorious for being lazy, uh, deceivers, um, and, and, and all sorts of um, uh, unfortunate uh, things characteristics so you've got this combination now of lazy fleshly people 
who have a propensity to de to deception combined with with false sort of predatory teachers who are who are saying that circumcision is enough just get circumcised you're all right just just keep the festivals you're all right just just say the right kind of prayers you'll be okay you know don't don't worry too much about your your inner life your spirit and whether you whether you your mind is clean and pure i don't worry about whether you're doing good works out of that pureness but just do these religious things and you'll be fine so you can see what a deadly combination that is and and Paul is warning Titus, this is saying, this is what you're walking into. This is what these churches have got a problem with. It's a bad combination of people who are lazy and fleshly. So what does that mean? It means that they're not studying the word of God. They're not protecting themselves with the Bible. Because studying the Bible is quite hard, isn't it? Have you noticed? You know, it takes a lot of brain power uh, and a lot of discipline to kind of study the bible every day in a systematic way to familiarize yourself with it to memorize it you know that that's hard work sometimes and so if you're a lazy person or a fleshly person like a you're not really interested in the spiritual things and b you're kind of you know can't really be bothered then you're not going to be able to protect yourself against these kind of false teachers you know it's a you're in a dangerous place and i'm afraid to say that you know i see this in people today you know, they big up these false teachers who to me are just like clearly false in what they teach. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I teach you such good things. And part of the reason is that they're too lazy to, to read the Bible or to study or to read a book that might be a bit challenging. You know, maybe maybe it's kind of um, slight, slightly, I won't say academic, but, but you know, maybe the words aren't that easy and, and you've got to really think about it, what the person's saying. And what they're doing is they're not protecting themselves adequately. You know, they're just not protecting themselves from these false teachers. And just like the Cretans here, you know, they are going to end up following these false teachers. They're going to end up, uh, uh, what did it say? When we looked at uh, whole houses, wasn't it? Um, they subvert whole houses. You know, they're going to end up being, remember subvert means to undermine or, or to overthrow the whole faith is going to be overthrown, you know, by these false teachers because they didn't take the time to study the word of God, protect themselves against false doctrine. And they're just like, they're just like, you know, demonic fodder. You know, they're just going to get, they're just going to, the, these doctrines of demons are just going to take them over. All right, well, I've gone on a bit there, so sorry about that. But, but it's important, you know, it's really important to kind of protect yourself from false teaching and false teachers and you do that i'm afraid there's no other way but by discipline by coming to the word of god knowing the word of god understanding the word of god and then applying it to your to your life